Morning folks. This morning soap is brought to us from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. The name of this one is Dorm. Down here it gives you a little bit of a hint on the scent besides the picture there. It's uh, going to be cannabis flower as well as nag champa. It's a fairly firm but soft soap. Easy to scrape out of the container here. That's our German Shepherd Tony. He's complaining. <laughs> it's fairly soft. Easy to scoop out for a bowl lather. And uh, that is an off-white color if it, that didn't pick it up very well. And i uh, got it whipped up here with a uh, brush that's got a badger knot. This one here is a little bit thicker than normal. I'm going to give it a try, see how it works out. Not dripping in other words. It should be interesting to see how this works out. I have not done one quite like this in a while. I guess you might say a thicker uh, lather. Allen Block getting much smaller, no uh, rubber band today. Also got Humphrey's Witch Hazel that's got menthol and peppermint in it. And also got the matching aftershave to go right along with it. And uh, this uh, scent is uh, probably not going to be for everyone. <laughs> uh, Manny, I remember when this, first time I did this. <laughs> Manny had a, his nose picked up a different scent. It was kind of funny. Anyway, yeah, this scent's not going to be for everyone. And it, it took me a little while to, I guess you might say, for it to grow on me. It's, uh, the scent is not light. It's, a uh, guess you might say, maybe a seven. It's, it's, it's fairly strong. Especially right off the puck and, and I, you know, I can smell the lather when I was whipping it up. And so it's, uh, it's not a light scent by any means. School has started here. And I thought maybe this just might be appropriate, huh? for this time of the year. Day's Tuesday. Yesterday was Labor Day. And uh, I decided uh, I was going to take today off a while back. Thought it would be a good idea. <laughs> Here is the uh, shaver of the day. This is a uh, double duck. I'm assuming it's referred to as a pearl duck. I can't find any other names on it. It does have a guard with it. Uh, there's the part that I was referring to in yesterday's video. Is that this is all metal. There's the little bump right there. This is as far back as the, the blade will go. But there's nothing to assist pushing the blade out. Kind of like that other version with that feature. But I like this one because it is a tad bit heavier. And this is what the other side of the uh, shaver looks like. But these are not the easiest to find. Um, you can find them in, you know, different, I guess you might say, conditions. But, um, yeah, they're not really easy to find. And they're usually kind of expensive. Not on the cheap side, that's for sure. And this is the uh, second use on this blade. It, um, for me these um, are very lightweight. They don't weigh a whole lot. I can understand why somebody would would mind you know using these on a regular basis especially if uh, you don't particularly care for anything that's got a lot of weight behind it. And I do have some shave vests do that do have some weight. Probably one that uh, a lot of people may be able to relate to, if you will, is the Parker SRX. It's all metal. You can see the scales. They look kind of beefy. It does weigh a little bit. And it's not too terribly expensive, uh, usually right around the $25 mark. Not a real expensive shave vet in the grand scheme of things. Um, one that does weigh a bit that uh, 
cost somewhat more than that is the uh, uh, Irving Barber Company IBC uh, that shave it there and now uh, it does weigh a little bit It is a, a pretty versatile shave head in that it takes a number of different kinds of blades. And those that do use it for a living, you can understand why somebody would appreciate it because uh, all the parts are readily available. I think I'm about ready to sneeze. Hang on a second. Maybe not, <laughs> but um, like I say, it, it's understandable why somebody would like an IBC uh, shave it because uh, all the parts are readily available if uh, something should go awry with it, uh, especially the, um, for instance, I may have to do that. i just checking that real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, uh, there's little uh, washers at the pivot point that are plastic that might wear out. And if you're taking it apart for cleaning and whatnot, and you happen to drop something and can't find it, <laughs> yeah, you can replace it. It's been a while since I mentioned it, but I would, uh, if you're going to take anything like that apart, uh, have a big fluffy towel that you're working on, whether you're at the sink. If you're at the sink, definitely have that stopper in. But, you know, just have something that's big and fluffy so that it, when it does fall, you kind of get stuck in that towel. There are, all these shavettes to me are, <coughs> excuse me, are pretty fun to use. Quite a challenge, different aspects of each one. In other words, what you use for pressure and angle with this would be different than an IBC or much of the, the other shavettes as far as that goes. There is one thing I did notice about this particular shaver is that um, not so much the shaver, but I guess you might say days gone by the blades from yesterday. The uh, the older blades, they had some weight behind them. Them things are heavy. This blade here is fairly lightweight. But you, if you ever get a hold of one of those vintage blades that's been around for a moment, uh, those do have some weight behind them. We'll see how I get that path. Maybe I'll do another... No, yesterday's shave went pretty good and didn't have to do a cross the grain right through there. One thing about this soap, it does have a a creaminess to it. Yeah, you notice that the diff that there is a difference between the creaminess of a tallow soap and a vegan, and you could feel the difference, but it's still creamy. You still feel it. I guess you might see a little bit of that almost like silk type feel to it. This knot has got a lot of lather <laughs> packed in it. There's plenty enough for a whole nother shave without a problem. But it was fun whipping it up, watching it mature, getting it past, I guess you might say, the drippy stage, the yogurt where it's a little bit thicker, not runny. I say runny, drippy runny, wet. Usually just a little drippy works well for me. That extra slickness helps out. At least for me it does.
That's another thing too about a shave vamp, straight razor. You don't have to worry about it clogging up. <laughs> you can just see that uh, all that shaving cream just build right on the top and slide them back. Tomorrow I'll get to go back to work. I think I'll try, if everything works out in the morning, uh, do another video. And the reason why I want to do that, the next video uh, tomorrow is uh, the next one I have lined up is a uh, uh, sex to blade, a weck shave it like this one here, hair shaper. And there is differences between the two. Uh, this one here looks to be a lot smaller. Uh, compared to the uh, WEC, uh, but the WEC has a lot more weight to it, so people would appreciate it for its weight. And it's a uh, I guess you might say not a beauty queen. It's been used over the years. And uh, but it still works just fine. Kind of speaking of that sort of thing, when it comes to name brands and looks and whatnot, straight razors can get you hooked, just like a DE uh, R41 rose gold handle. That is a great looking shaver. And then you look at some of these straight razors, it is, it is easy to get hooked on them. I mean, just by looks alone. Not too bad. Getting used to it. It takes a little while, like I say. It's lightweight, so I'm not... Lightness doesn't always work well for me. <clears throat> it takes me a few shaves to get it under control. Where I'm much better, especially doing that sweeping motion right through there. Something that's got a little bit more weight behind it. I can sweep through there sometimes. And uh, that way I don't have to, I guess you might say, do it, worry about that uh, across the grain stroke. And of course, like I said... If you got one like that, there's sometimes I just grab the uh, whatever my handy shaver is going to be that I'm going to use for that time, and I'm just going to go over it real quick, and you know you catch it like that, and move on down the road. I don't see any harm in it if you're not comfortable with doing a cross the green. Cross the green is not the easiest to do. Uh, it's one thing to do it, I guess you might say, from the jawline up, but when you get down on the neck, I cannot, for me, for the life of me, I cannot visualize it and get that to work out in my head so I don't attempt it <laughs> I don't really have a need for it outside just for the fact of the sake of just learning how to do it everything on my neck is already pretty smooth I really don't need any, any more uh, whisker reduction there it's just fine now we'll see how well the shave went with the Allen block thought there was a spot right here that I thought maybe I caught Right there, I got it. Not on this side, but on this side. <laughs> A little bit of stinging right there. It's a, the way I look at it when it comes to these kind of different shavers with a shavette, it's an art. It's just like whipping up the lather. Uh, it's an art. You get to looking at it, you watch how it develops, get it there with different kinds of... Uh, bristles in other words boar boar to me whips it up differently than what a badger does a horse hair does it to me a horse hair is closer my horse hair maybe because i've already got them broke in they're fairly close to a synthetic not quite but they're pretty close and uh, i don't have any problem out of my horse hair brushes but 
Um, I know it has a lot to do with how I whip up my lather in that in the bowl I'm just using a circular motion like this on the sides working it down towards the bottom then down towards the end of my guess my save the development of the lather is when I start to work more towards the, the bottom and I don't my the bristles don't get tangled up quite like I guess you might say like how others might whip up their lather I could definitely understand number of folks going towards the uh, synthetics though the synthetic the knots they they, they dry dry out a whole lot quicker it doesn't take very long at all to get one pretty dry and if you're traveling then that's even a better you know bigger plus right there and none of that if you're if you're in a, a bathroom and there's several people using the bathroom you're trying to get your stuff out you know for the next person coming in and like you hear my countertop space is only yeah almost as big as the screen it's not very big it's pretty small so putting stuff out on the counter in other words when I get done I got to take it move it somewhere in other words it's not a big counter where I can just leave stuff laying out and it looks like glitter right there doesn't it <laughs> Got some good aftershave here. Now, if you happen to run across some of this on a buy, sell, trade, you do want to shake this up. It does have, um, I don't know sure what it is. I'm assuming it's part of the leaf that's in here. So you'll want to shake it up. Uh, you don't, I really don't notice until after it's been sitting for a while. And I, for, when you first pick it up, you can see, you'll see it settling along the bottom. Right now, you really can't see it in there. Like I say, it takes a moment for it to settle. At least, that's how my bottle is. I think that piece of glitter is still there. There's one thing I will say that I'd like... I like the scent strength of this aftershave. It sticks around for a good long moment. I can... That is still there. <laughs> um, I like being able to smell the scent, especially one like this that is strong, deep, heavy type scent in my opinion. It's, it's going to stick around for a moment. Wife won't have any problem smelling this one. One thing I want to point out before I wrap this up, 17 minutes, I'm going on 18. Um, this beard oil here also doubles as a pre-shave and this particular one I should point out to anybody that's looking at using this um, this one here Island Man it is not the same color of some of the other oils in that this one here has a light blue tint to it I haven't any problems with the change of my <laughs> beard that color but see if I can get a little bit on my hand. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It's, um, no, you're not going to be able to see it, but that is blue. It's going to be hard to see on the camera, I know. But when you get it in the right light, that, that, uh, it's blue. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it, but for somebody else, they may not appreciate that. They might like the other color versus uh, a blue beard oil, but I thought I'd point that out, let somebody know, in case you're looking into it. I had a great shave. If everything goes well, I'll have another video. If not, it'll be went, no, Thursday, not Wednesday. I'm going to try to have it up and running on on Wednesday with the, the WEC. And I'll leave this one here. I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference in between the two. To me, there's a big difference in between them. Had a great shave. Hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe and smooth shaves to you.